This is the Evan Ginsberg Show at VillageConnectionRadio.com. Jim Savali at the helm, engineering, and the owner of VillageConnectionRadio.com. And uh, it's going to be a very eclectic mix as always. Later in the show, we have mentalist Robin Channing, who has uh, mutant powers. He'll amaze you as always. Uh, we're going to have actor and stunt chore choreographer Chris Pitlack and media expert Erica A. talking about all the latest and greatest in cinema and TV. But right now we are joined by director, producer, my buddy, John DePriest Anthony. And he's wearing a Misfits uh, sweatshirt. Oh, yeah. Tell us about the Misfits for those who don't well, know. Well, I went to the um, I went to the actual reunion uh, show this past week. And um, they actually brought Glenn Danzig back, the original okay. lineup of the Misfits. So and I'm here to represent Tell the us Misfits. about the, the lesser known members. Although the uh, <laughs> who are the other members? Well, you had uh, let's see, you have you know uh, Glenn Danzig, um, you have uh, the Lonely Brothers, you know. So yeah, let me tell you, they had uh, they had Lombardo playing drums for for the Misfits, and I gotta say they put a hell of a good show. It's good to see Glenn yeah. back in in the Misfits again. Yeah, rock punk legends. Rock punk legends. legends yeah. Oh yeah. There you go. Yeah. And um, you have. Just had a very interesting experience. I was at the screening of uh, 
Lorelai Runes and uh, Bajon and you got on your got on your knees and proposed yeah. in the middle of all of this to uh, Jamie Giordano and it was very moving and yeah. uh, you were getting choked up. Tell oh, us yeah. about that. Well, the whole thing is, um, well, it's kind of one of those things in the making type of thing. I I knew when it was the right time to propose to Jamie and. Um, but you've known you've known each other for a long time. Thirty two so years. Yeah. Thirty two years. Yeah, thirty two so years. What yeah. made what made this movie screening the right <laughs> moment? That's what I'm interested in. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's just say that um, we're, we've always had a niche for the arts. Okay, she loves a lot of she does a lot of crocheting. Um, she also directed Laura Lai Ruins Rec Room, which you're in. Um, I'm in Bjorn on this day. And what happened was that, you know, we've been divorced. I've been divorced once. She's been divorced also. And um, we decided, you know, I figure I want to try something different, you know. And I was trying to figure out the best way to propose to her rather than, so I didn't get down on one knee, which was, uh, so what happened was at the end of the festival, and Evan, you were there. I was there. Everybody was a riser, the whole cast and crew, and we had to get going because there was another showcase ready to happen. And um, I actually had the ring in my jacket. And I said, now that our worlds have, are, have been created, there's one last thing I need to I need to give you. So I pulled out the ring, <laughs> and I said, do you want to rule the effing universe with me? <laughs> yeah. How romantic. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And she says... Well, yes, yeah. Uh, yeah, fuck yeah. yeah, I'll marry you. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, and um, but it, it was very moving because I could see you you were emotional, and yeah. she got very choked up. And... You know, the, and the choking up is is that I, I mean, again, coming from you know, I was divorced and I didn't cry or nothing like that. And the reason why I I cry because sometimes it's like watching a movie. Okay, except and you're the star. You, except you're the star, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. And. You're waiting for that. It's like a series that has gone. You have 32 episodes, right? And each year is considered an episode, right? And when you want to get to that end of that season, you want to make sure that you go out without a bang. Just like what happened with Empire Strikes Back when Luke, I am your father, or you know, you know what I mean. So in things or Thanos, you know, snapping the finger and then half the whole entire Marvel universe gets annihilated. And I wanted to do this, but it was like 32 years of emotion, and I had a crush on this girl back in high school, but the timings were off. And then finally, it was like a dream come true. Now it's like, wow, now I got, I got an awesome movie. I got, we got, I got two beautiful girls, and now I got the woman I've always wanted. And when you say two beautiful girls, it, it's not polygamy. She has a daughter. Uh, yeah, she has a daughter. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Because well, today you never know. So. Yeah, and I have a daughter too. That's uh, okay. 19. So, right, and right. she actually did the. Uh, she also did the makeup artwork, uh, Krista, right. and, and, and the production. So That's yeah. right. And uh, you mentioned Star Wars. And um, I found it interesting that when major characters are killed off, fans go out of their minds and they start yes. sending hate mail and oh, yeah. get, get the producers fired. <laughs> I mean, isn't it, a, it... As much as we love this stuff and we devote, our stu- we devote ourselves to it, isn't it like crossing a line like... The kid gets killed, I'm walking dead, and they get oh, yeah. millions of letters, fire the producer. Come on, oh, yeah. you know, isn't that an overreaction? It, it sure is. And you know what? And uh, Pit, Chris Pidlack and I, we're, we're big Star Wars fanatics, and we're talking about The Last Jedi, how it had all this, a lot of hype on it. Like, you know, in my theory, it, it was a it was a very well, it was a good movie, but it wasn't as great as a sequel like it should have been. You know, like... Uh, you know, for whatever reason, and then of course there's the political factor with Walt Disney terminating Colin Trevorrow because Colin Trevorrow was supposed to direct Episode Nine, and there's all this the way the fan base I'm looking and for the franchise and you know. And, and since you mentioned that, as a Disney stockholder, how come the stock never goes up when, yeah, exactly. when they have all <laughs> they have all these blockbusters? Disney stock is always losing money. I don't yeah. understand this. Yeah, well, I think what it is too is a lot of it has to do with the Comcast buyout. They they want to buy Fox, 20th Century Fox, so they can get all the Marvel rights to Marvel Studios, and they want to bring the Fantastic Four and the X Men to the MCU. And so, yeah. I have been reading all this. I've I've been like interested in the financing factor of this whole. Yeah, they haven't quite in, they haven't quite gotten Fantastic Four right yet. As exactly. many times <laughs> as they try. Yeah. Like, how do you mess up the Silver Surfer? What a great character. I know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I don't know. Um, personally, I enjoy the superhero movies, but at the same time, 
even with Deadpool, the last 20 minutes are always the same. Yes. Everything's breaking. They're flying through the air. There's explosions. I, I mean, can't you come up with something different? I mean... Yeah, well, that's what, you know, and, and with uh, going with Bjorn, uh, Bjorn, we kind of, you know, had, there's the, a lot of people have told us after the festival, it had uh, like a cross between Game of Thrones and Deadpool, as opposed to like Lorelai Runes, had a cross between uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, you know, mixed with, a, you know, with like, you know, Vampire Diaries with a 90s-esque feel to it, so, and you know what, and I, a lot of times, I, like, I'm a big Deadpool fanatic, I love Deadpool, and... I love the fact that you could have someone like him, you know, like as Deadpool can have uh, the freedom of speech, actually talk, do a fourth wall, talk to the audience. But my, and, I, I like that. Yeah. I didn't see the second one yet, yeah. but the um, the first one, I enjoyed it very much. But as I'm watching that last 20 minutes ago, it's just like every other superhero yeah, movie. Yeah. So, you know, it's it's kind of looking like it's above it all, but it wasn't. Yeah, there's always the stingers. The stingers nowadays is that, it's a new thing. It's almost like if you're watching a series, okay? And if you're watching a, a series on, you know, it's almost like, okay, here's a cliffhanger for the next episode or something like that, you know? So <laughs> so tell us about some of the highlights of your career. You've been directing and producing for a long yeah, time. Yeah, and, um, and then got into acting, you know, more serious, seriously into acting now. And um, the way I, I feel like as, you know, being around about in the, the filmmaking industry as a director – you know, producer, and then more into like the acting. Now, I feel like you know when you create your own. You know, when you have you're an artist, you have a blank canvas, That's right? right? And when you look, stare at a blank canvas, and there's times where I mean, I've had writer's block, and and this is what helps me with my established things. I sometimes have to do is have to tune everything out, and I'll start listening to music like Hans Zimmer's orchestra or like Mozart or something like that. And I just look at this black, I mean, a, a white canvas, okay? And what I end up doing is that gives me the motivation and the inspiration to start, and then I, it's, everything starts to click. It's, it's For me, it starts with the music. Hmm. Music motivates. It's like a, it's like you're writing a song. You need okay. you need uh, music, and you got to have lyrics yeah, to write. Everybody has a different process. Exactly, yeah. I, I think instead of a blank canvas, you need a blank check. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> to make movies yeah. today, boy, people don't realize. It's, oh, yeah. yeah and, it's, you know, like I then the thing with Bjorn... On this day, that we did that on an eight thousand dollar production. Um, I shot a full length documentary on eight grand once. Oh, have you? <laughs> Teresa Sario alive again. Wow! And um, she was a singer who lost her leg uh, in, a, in a tragic accident, and she was singing for wounded warriors. And oh, wow. we, we okay. had full access. We uh, were working with the military, and we we shot it on eight grand. So yep. if you know what you're doing, you could do a movie on the cheap, a quality movie. Exactly. But. Um, what, but what happens eventually is when you move to bigger projects, exactly, yes. you know, the budget starts expanding exponentially. And a lot of times the, the money is the real issue. Oh, yeah. And one thing that I learned, like I'm a big Robert Rodriguez fan. I, I oh, love, yeah. You know, he, he really inspired a lot of my filmmaking. And well, Mariachi was eight grand, Mariachi too, Mariachi right? was eight grand, too, as yeah, well, yeah. yeah. That's the magic number. Yeah. And <laughs> you know what? And I, and I look at it this way. If you have stock... Like, if you have a camera, video editing systems, you know, you have all these things. And, you know, if you have access to a studio, like the studio we're in now, you can make a movie about a studio, okay? You can make a movie if you have a friend that owns a bar. I'm going to make a movie about, a, you know, a bar and you have access to, to that. Now, um, Jamie went to go see this movie called, I think it's called Breaking In, and it had Gabriel Union in it and actually was shot in one location. It was all done in the house. So. They, they've they've shot movies and edited movies on iPhones. Yeah. I think the oh, Beastie yeah. Boys movie was done yeah. on an iPhone. Yeah, oh, yeah. Right? definitely. Yeah, yeah. 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 So the technology is there, but like everything, there's pluses and minuses. Exactly, there's yeah. a glut of content. Oh, absolutely. You know, YouTube and uh, Roku. It's like a burial ground sometimes exactly, for, yeah. for projects. And you know, so I guess my big question, uh, as we both produce independent film. Uh, how do you rise above it all and, and really get your art out there? Because yeah. it's not easy. You know what the whole thing is, the bottom line is, you got. You, we all know that in the entertainment industry that there's a lot of a lot of sharks out there, right? Oh, we yeah. know there's a lot of sharks out there and the best thing is you want to find a legitimate agent of some sort where that person's got connections. What what is the, what is their profile look like? If you're, if you're got, even if you've got to go on LinkedIn and talk to people that have worked with these agents before that those are the ones that will have connections with i mean 
it still works to this day of, you know, well, my parents were actors. I'm going to get my kid into acting. Oh, and yeah. now automatically they already have that automatic yeah. leverage where they can start so, acting. Uh, we're getting rid of the casting couch, but now now we st- we still have the nepotism and the cronyism. Yeah, yeah exactly. You're always going to have that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's um, it's a crazy business, but it's very re- very rewarding. And I'm sure oh, yeah. I'm sure 20 years from now you'll look back at the. This was about two weeks ago. I lose track of time. I'm so busy. Oh, yeah, yeah, about oh, yeah. two weeks ago. Where you know you propose to your future wife uh, with a room full of friends oh, and yeah. people that love and respect you, and that's probably going to be one of the one, if not the best days yeah. of your life. Yeah, so. and I wanted to make this, and again, I'm all about surprises. I'm about. I keep thinking about again. Yeah, the Empire Strikes Back, right? Vader says to Luke, and nobody. This was unexpected. I am your father, and in this case, I wanted to. Have it where the ultimate climax was is when I proposed to her in a different way, you know, and rather than getting it down on one, you know, I kept thinking about the one knee, that's expected, this now I want to try something totally I different. I guess I just yeah. imagined that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I, I was somewhere, there, though. Yeah. Some, somebody actually filmed that thing, so if I could get that, I can, oh, okay. I'll definitely be broadcasting that. See, in pro wrestling, we, we just would have hit one or both of you with a chair. Yeah, that would have yeah, been yeah, a surprise. Be like, just yeah, a, you just as you proposed. Will you marry me now? Yeah. <laughs> that would have been the big surprise. <laughs> that would have been the big uh, surprise, yeah. That's right. For those who are wondering why I'm making a, a wrestling reference, uh, I was the associate producer on The Wrestler nice. okay. and the upcoming 350 Days nice. starring Bret Hart and superstar Billy Graham, which goes into theaters July 12th. But if we want to stick to your your stuff now. I can yeah. plug away my own stuff sure. later. <laughs> but um, so, what do you have coming up? Okay, so um, well, we're, I got I brought two trailers. So people could check it out. We had the uh, our film festival Warhammer Cinema put out called Gods of the Paradox. It was the first of a series. And explain the meaning. What's Gods of the Paradox mean to you? Okay, so Gods of the Paradox is a name of an actual film series, kind of like the MCU Marvel Cinematic Universe, okay. where. You have the Iron Mans, you have the Thors, you have the Guardians of the Galaxy. They all meet up in one, you know, one movie called The Avengers: Infinity War. Okay, we have our own style. We have our own version of that, and we call it Gods of the Paradox. Which in each dimension, there's one person that is a, considered a god that can ultra, ultra travel between. In, in our world, it's Jim Savali. Yeah, He's, exactly, Jim Savali. Yeah. Do you know who knows who's Veron- Veronic? Veronic, love you, Hans Zimmer. <laughs> Hans Zimmer is a musician. I guess a musician, he's a yeah. fan. Yeah, he's yeah, a fan. Yeah, I came, bro. yeah. <laughs> and um, and and so you know, we I had this I lavish idea. I say, hey, you know what? I'd like to get on this bandwagon too. So um, nice. so I have two previews I want to showcase, and I'll talk to people. Yeah, so uh, set, set up the trailers for us then. Right. Uh, so the first film uh, trailer is uh, Bjorn on This Day, which is about a um about a alternate universe of a, a bunch of gods living in this world called Bala. And it's the alternate version of pretty much the heavens. Okay. So basically you and Jamie have created an entire universe. Exactly, yeah. That's great. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. I've created a radio show. You yeah. created an entire universe. <laughs> I created I'm an impressed. whole entire universe, yeah. I'm impressed. <laughs> and then in Jamie's world, um, which is Laurel Light Roots Requiem, which you had a, a, a good cameo starring That's appearance. That's right, I did a cameo. Um, <laughs> was attacked by a vampire. Got attacked by a vampire, oh yeah. Um, and that's more in the world of the supernatural, where you had the vampires, the hybrids, and, and witches. And what that actually does is, so now we have a whole different dimension, a whole other universe where now, the movie that will come a couple films afterwards, we got a, a series of different movies coming up that will lead to this. And you'll see how each person interacts and the god that you really need is the uh is the angel with the uh big paycheck yes to to fund all yes here you go that's what you really need but uh (laughs) no (laughs) but but anyway let's go to the trailers i know what you're thinking what kind of story i'm about to tell who am i well it all starts here Born 
as gods and raised as warriors, charged with the eternal guardianship and loyalty, the inhabitants of Valar are bound by honor to the realm. Though forbidden to leave, select few are able to cross over to the parallel dimension of Earth when it becomes necessary for the good of the Empire. I am the greatest creation ever designed. Welcome to my world of anarchy. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Bjorn. But you never ever wanna leave your rings behind you! So uh, we're going to just chat a bit while we set up the second one. Okay. Um, so s why don't you tell us what the uh, next trailer is? Okay, so the next trailer is Lorelei Ruins Requiem, which was directed by Jamie, Jamie Giordano. Um, Chris I, I, always thought, I always thought like opposites attract. You two have like the same interests, yeah, yeah. the same past. And is, does that work also? Yeah, oh, absolutely, yeah. Because it's um, cause when you have two creative minds that are creative you could you know you could you could do a lot of you could do a lot of stuff you know see, see my wife is a uh, korean classical pianist and uh, i oh, took wow. a i i take it to like george clinton p funk shows and oh, she's nice. like a little befuddled but eventually <laughs> she like gets it oh yeah, definitely, you know? yeah. So, so we're more like opposites of track oh really but, okay uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, you know it takes her a while she kind of looks like a puppy and then all of a sudden she kind of gets oh, it yeah. you know yeah um uh, yeah it's a, the good thing about you know bjorn um you know Chris Pitlack, which he's going to be on the show soon. Um, just he, a few minutes. Just in a few minutes, yeah. Uh, he helped with the fight choreography and the stage combat of, and he actually plays the villain that I fight against in, in Bjorn. Okay. Um, with Lorelai Runes, it's like I said, supernatural. As you you know, you saw the you know yourself. It's got a dark take to it. You know, and there's a, you know you have the lighter side and you have the dark side of stuff. All right, so. Uh... We're going to, in just a few minutes, see the uh, trailer for uh, Lorelei Runes, and uh, I had a lot of fun um, acting in it. I It was like 107 degrees, and I yes, was playing oh, yeah. a businessman, and I had a suit and tie, and it was it was, it was was a long day, <laughs> you know, but, but, but I'll tell you something interesting. Jackie Chan once said that, he says, if I do a stunt and I break my ankle, so what? It's immortalized on yeah. film forever. Right. So, you know, you, sometimes you have to suffer for your art wearing a suit <laughs> in a 107 degree weather. But um, uh, eventually it's there for that's posterity. Right. Oh, yeah. No, that's posterity. definitely. Yeah. And uh, someday, um, maybe maybe at my uh, wake or whatever, they'll be showing clips from my life and they'll show me being attacked by a giant vampire. Yeah. <laughs> what was Evan? He had a strange life, yeah. you know? <laughs> So I might have to come back to this one, guys, because uh, the computer's a little okay, okay, not cooperative. But it's some... here, so I'll be able to play it in just a little bit. As okay, as, as, uh... we're having some. Uh, yeah, this is live radio, so we we occasionally have some tech. Yeah. Uh, but um. But the, I will say though that um, even with Bjorn on this day, uh, one of the days of the film shoot, and she actually the the, the girl was actually in Laurel. She played the lead character for Lorelai, and um, she's wearing this black leather all black leather attire black leather pants black leather jacket and it was a day and it, i never forget it was on a, we started shooting this movie in september of last year huh. and um i'll never forget she was it was a hundred degrees yeah that's what i'm degrees. saying and, yeah. she, and it was to the point like she couldn't move i'm like wow this poor girl can't even move because the leather was actually sticking, sticking to her it, like yeah. like no tomorrow so i'm like so i so now i started to wonder you got these superheroes right I wear long sleeves all year round, you know. It's like, how do they? How do they must feel when when uh, getting out of that suit? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, sometimes like uh, Planet of the Apes, they're in makeup for hours. I yeah. mean, just just to put it on, then you have to shoot all day, oh, then yeah. to take it off. 
you know, they, they, they do suffer for their art to a certain degree. You know? Oh, definitely, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, you know, what we'll, we'll, what we'll do is we'll take a short time out. We'll bring Chris on board. And uh, tell us a little about Chris before we... Uh... Yeah, so uh, Chris Pitlack, he's from uh, Not In Your Face Productions. Um, him and I got connected uh, with a mutual friend. She's actually, her name is Star Falcano. And um, she was, uh, she's the editor and actually she has a role in uh, Bjorn on this day. Uh, so they are, they have a, uh, an organization, a, a film group, and they're working on some TV ser- uh, web series they're working on right now. They've also uh, edited Bjorn uh, along with the, also Chris actually choreographed and wrote a lot of the fight sequences for this movie. Awesome. So, awesome. so yeah. Okay, so we're going to take a brief time out and we'll uh, get your trailer queued up and we'll bring out Chris Pitlack and uh, we'll continue with the Evan Ginsberg show at villageconnectionradio.com. Let me just uh, quickly uh, plug our sponsors. Uh, we thank Dr. Scott Bernstein, DDS, Timothy Dark Music.net. Timothy Dark is a hip hop artist. And uh, Frederick Gilbert Bourne, Forgotten Titan of the Gilded Age. Here's another Bourne. Nice. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> anyway. So uh, we'll be back in just a few, folks. And uh, we'll talk more movies with uh, Chris Pitlack and later Erica A. And at the very end of the show, if you like fantasy and uh, uh, mentalist Robin, Robin Channing will blow you away. I guarantee it. He's been on my shows nice. many, awesome. many times. So... Uh, We'll be right back in just a quick time out. She keeps a loaded suitcase under her bed. She knows some days she'll need to run from here. She's got nowhere to go, but everything to wear. When life is left her empty, she's learned to fill her head and leave the pain behind for someone else. She never had it easy, never seemed to care. She had was everything she gave. We goodbye.
back with the Evan Ginsberg Show at VillageConnectionRadio.com. We are joined by actor, stunt choreographer, Chris Pitlack. And, um, you know, I'm a fan of old school action films, black exploitation, uh, spaghetti westerns, mm-hmm. uh, all, the, all the good old stuff, uh, Hammer Horror, yeah. et cetera, so on. And uh, sometimes I watch fight sequences in old films and I cringe because the guy misses by 10 feet and uh, the other guy sells it. And yeah. So tell us a little about choreographing fights. That's an interesting art. Yeah, well, thank you. Uh, yeah, it's, um, I mean, just to touch on, on those old films, a lot of times those old films, uh, when, they, when they approach these old films, um, the f- filmmaking was much different then too. So like when you edit, you literally had what you had in the can. Right. So like if, if if there was not a good take, they had to use it, and um, I mean those were the pioneers of kind of the fight choreography. They they made the mistakes so that way you get to see the movies today like Marvel and all those other movies that are just out of control. Everything looks perfect, um, but the art the art uh, behind writing a fight is really uh, there's a lot of things that go into it. I mean you really have to have a, a background in uh, martial arts. You have to have a background in understanding what would be real and what would play to. Uh, in a real fight but also you have to understand what the audience is looking for um there's a storytelling element that goes into it you need to care about the character you know you go back classic to like uh fight choreography back to like shakespeare right oh shakespeare wrote he wrote stories and he put fights in there not just for the sake of this fight for the sake of fighting the fights were in there because by the end of that fight you should learn something about that character you should that character should go on a journey through that fight that teaches you and tells you something about who that character is um, and the meaning behind the story. So you really have to look at the purpose of the violence and then also present it in a, in a really good way with re- tons of rehearsals, uh, great background in you know just what the fights would be, and safety measures when it comes to uh, choreographing a fight and putting it all together to making sure that everybody's good. I think you hit the nail on the head when you said you have to care about the characters yeah. because um, I'll watch some superhero movies and um, yeah. well, sometimes I just don't care. Yeah. I mean, you know, the, <laughs> you're overwhelmed with the CGI and the noise and everything else. And uh, what happens inevitably is you go, all right, so, uh, you know, this, this secondary character died and, yeah. you know, it doesn't affect me one iota. And, um, you know, you just kind of move on. and It's a big thing. I mean, that's really, that's really why we go to see movies, right? We go because everything's about the characters. I mean, we want to see, uh, there's a story that's being told and it's, it's really about the journey that these characters are taking, you know? Um, and, uh, so uh, that's really what we're what you're looking at when you, and, and fights are nothing different than that you really can't just I've actually worked on a few projects where um, they want to put tons of fights into um, a thing and I'm like I, I like we can but it doesn't support your story it doesn't support what you're doing so like yes I'm here but let's not spend eight hours on a fight that's not going to move the story forward <laughs> exactly. you know it just doesn't make sense and sometimes the fighting is overkill I yeah. mean, it, yeah. it's just one endless fight after yeah. another. We were talking about Star Wars before. Yeah. You know, how, how many space shootouts do you need in two and a half hours? I mean, right. you know, it's like, how about the characters? Yeah, and that, uh, I know it's crazy when you look at those Star Wars movies. Like, I'm a, I really want to see the stories of these new characters, right? Exactly. Like, I grew up with Luke. I grew up with, yeah. you know, Han. I grew up with all these people, you know, in the stories, and I, and I followed their ensemble through those three movies. I mean, you kind of, you kind of have he, the new characters. Kind of like here's the very vanilla, yeah. perfect good guy. Yeah. Here's the purely evil bad guy. Yeah. And what makes like the HBO and Showtime's uh, long form series great is the characters are complicated. Got it. Tony Soprano's a vicious gangster, but he's also a, a, a loving dad. Yeah. You know, so it's not black and white. Yeah, you definitely see. And that. I'm getting all kinds of signals yeah. here that the, that the, the sacred trailer is ready. Yeah. This is so. Let, let's hit it. Let's hit it. Oh, I... <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, no, I did not work on this one. This is not uh, the film. Yeah. Chris, take, Chris takes no blame for this uh, no, trailer. No, 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 no. Trailer I'm just saying, I'm just saying the, the other tech one, difficulties. The other one was the one that I worked yeah. on. <laughs> it's the whole tech difficulties. <laughs> I just can't really talk to that one, so. Right. Because I. But, um. Okay, here we go. Here okay. we go. All right, awesome. <laughs> Over centuries ago. 
my ancestors would talk about all supernatural beings. A world where they exist on both planes. A parallel universe between the living and the dead. One by one, they start to take over and eliminate all of humanity. To reclaim their territory, which is once theirs. Now, it's my time to save the human race. Hunt them down and destroy them all. I think we can handle this. So that was Lorelei Runes trailer by uh, Jamie Giordano and um, John DePriest Anthony. He's like the proud papa. He's oh, here. Yeah, he's beaming. Yeah. <laughs> we, we got the trailer yeah, for Yeah, yeah. Finally, the supernatural trailer. That's, that's right. Call, you know? That's right. And they always say, um, I'm not trying to interview no, right, Chris's, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, no interview, but um, the one thing about Lorelei Rune's Requiem, that house was actually shot in a house that was has true paranormal hauntings. So... You never know. Maybe the trailer yeah. would have had some supernatural feel to it. <laughs> I was in that house all day, and uh, it, was, it's, it really had atmosphere. Yes, it did. Yeah, yeah. 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 When we when we shot that day. Yeah. Yeah, I, I like that place. Yeah. I, I wasn't scared <laughs> I or anything. I, I liked it. There, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah. so Chris, yeah. when you look at some of the great fight scenes mm -hmm. in movie history, as a choreographer, you yeah. might look at it a little differently. I think of Jackie Chan, Drunken Master. Mm -hmm. I think of Bruce Lee, Game of Death. Mm -hmm. I think of Sean Connery and Robert Ryan from Russia with Love. Sure. What is what are some of the great fight sequences? Oh man! In your opinion, uh, I mean, for me, in my opinion, uh, I, I I tend to I came into the fight choreography um, world through uh, the European martial arts, so like a lot of sword play. So. Um, so I would say probably for me, I, I look at some of the fights from obviously the Princess Bride is it's one of the most classic, you know, uh, sword fights that you that you oh, okay. that you see, um, and it had comedy, it had story. I mean, again, you learn about these characters immensely in this fight. Bruce, Bruce Lee and uh, Chuck Norris Return yeah, of the was, Dragon. I mean, that, yeah, that was Bruce. Crazy, I know he's love got Bruce. The, I love Bruce. Um, but I would say uh, some of the some of the greats. Though you have that fight, you have uh, the Princess Bride, you have the fight uh, between. Um, Hector and Achilles in Troy uh, with Brad Pitt and Eric Bana. Yeah. Um, one of my fight mentors. What do you think of yeah. the old sword and sandal uh, epics, which was even before I was born, Earl, it was like actually around the time I was born, late 50s, early 60s with Steve Reeves. And they, well, what do you think of those movies? They're a little hokey, but uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, to be, to be uh, fair, yeah. They, I, I've I'm not extensively uh, deep in the knowledge on those. I've seen and neither some am of those. I. I just casually so, watch them once in a while. Yeah, you don't have to really focus too much. No, I mean it's it's always fun to watch like the way things used to be yeah. and the way you know, especially uh, you know, as an editor as well. When you look at things, you can kind of just say to yourself, "Wow, like man, we would have we in our day now we would have taken that shot." zoomed into this little piece right here because that's the important piece right. but they just had it in the can here's what they had this is right, the shot right, they had right, and you right. can't really adjust it at that time I loved so uh, really... Jet Li Once Upon a Time in China mm. you know, those, those are unbelievable yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I hear he's having some health issues yes he is yeah, yeah it's too oh, yeah. bad too bad that, yeah. yeah Jet Li was amazing yeah. and uh, but Jackie Chan Drunken Master and Drunken Master 2 yeah. unbelievable yeah unbelievable Jackie yeah. Chan's one of, one of the um, I mean he writes choreography from a standpoint of a of a musical standpoint, he thinks of it like the in, in fight choreography. It would be really boring if every fight was like boom, boom. But every hit was like this, right? Jackie Chan takes the approach. He's building a musical in his head, so he, he takes this like bum, 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 yeah. bum, bum, and those yeah. are the moves. Bum, 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 Jackie bum. compares himself to Buster Keaton. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 <laughs> you know, I was watching. Um, I like, I like. Shaw Brothers and old school kung mm -hmm. fu movies and uh, yeah, I'm getting that feel. You are all about the kung fu movies. No, I I yeah. I, I just like old school <laughs> yeah. action films. Yeah. E even um, the Italian uh, mafia movies in the oh, yeah. 70s, right. I like those yeah. also. Yeah. But um, so I'm watching this movie, One Arm Boxer. Okay. And the guy 
gives the guy a karate chop and his arm falls off. I go, this is like Monty Python. This is awesome. Well, his arm just falls it's off. Flesh wound, dude. It's only I mean, flesh yeah. wound. Yeah. <laughs> it was so absurd, and it just keeps fighting, you know. And, and so, so later he has he has one arm, mm -hmm. and and you, during the fight by accident you see the the second arm, yeah. you know, of course. Yeah. One it's on boxer, awesome. don't miss it. Yeah. Awesome. Check that out then. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah that was uh, what was that? Monty Python, the Holy Grail, right? With yeah. the with the yeah. chops the arm off, and he's like, oh, it's just a flesh wound. Flesh wound. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, 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 Monty Python. Classic. So, uh, what are some of your favorite movies? You know, whether whether they're action films sure. or not, you're, you're you're obviously a big movie buff. Yeah, no, um, I, I would say definitely. Uh, there's so many, man. There's so many um, for very various reasons. But, um, man, I, you know, I'm, I'm a weird person when I'm always asked favorite, what is your favorite? Because there's so many different aspects of a film that I like. That Sometimes I like are, a bad movie just because yeah, I can relax. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> you know, you have to focus as hard. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I love the fact that, like, when you take, like, a, a, a series, when Lord of the Rings came out, um, I love that that opened up this world to, to the mainstream audience for this fantasy it just really opened up and made yeah. it okay for these fantasy movies to be like mainstreamed, yeah. um, you know. Because before that, it was sure it was there and these were there, but it wasn't as widespread as like you, the, you're involved with Renaissance fans. I am, and, yeah. Um, a movie that I love that's yeah. rarely seen is uh, George Romero's Night Riders. What'd you think of that? <laughs> so I have actually never seen that. That's a great film. Yeah, you know, have to see I that. I know. I've heard that. It's it's about like Renaissance yeah. fans and these guys <laughs> living by this old school code. Yeah. It's George, crazy. Great film, right? Yeah, yeah. George Romero's lesser yeah. known films were excellent. Martin, Martin yeah. The Vampire. Martin, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I've heard that so many times. Yeah, it's just one of those things. Getting into to seeing to seeing something like that. Yeah. So yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll throw this out to John and yeah. Jim. Uh, also, what are you, what are your favorite films? Favorite films? Um, I, I would say uh, you know roughly anything that like the Marvel Marvel films that are coming out now. Those are my least favorite films. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Yeah. I'm Star kidding. Wars, but also I've been a big fan of like Game of Thrones, uh, the show Vikings. Game you know, of Thrones is awesome. Yeah, I awesome. just love that. And then yeah, actually, yeah, Jamie was... just got me into uh, watching uh, cr you know Criminal Minds and. SVU, which, as a matter of fact, now she's being inspired to write a, a new upcoming film called uh, Triquatra, mm -hmm. which is kind of like a spell uh, that. I have no wow. idea. Triquatra. It's, well, it's on on the ring because I had a ring, you know, engagement ring designed as a Triquatra symbol on there. So I think it's T R I Q U E R T A. Okay. Triquatra. Hope you I hope you spelled it right when you inscribed it. <laughs> yeah. 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 I think it's Triquatra. You don't want to misspell right, so, those uh, inscriptions. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah. so. Um, some movies that I love off the top of my yeah. head. Once, about the street musicians. Mm -hmm. Beautiful film. The Harder They Come, Jimmy Cliff. Tr one. Tremendous film. Yeah. I'm, I'm a music guy, so... Uh, yeah, I'm a musician as yeah. well. Yeah. That, was, that, was a, that was a midnight film. Nice. The Harder They Come. You ever see that, Jim? No. Tremendous I've film. Part of it, though. He, he's a gangster, but he's yeah. also a musician. Wow. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Great soundtrack, huh. Jimmy Cliff. Oh, I have to check that out. Um, Kind of like Desperado, you know, you know, yeah. like Des nice. the movie Desperado was awesome. Before Midnight, that that whole trilogy, Before Midnight, yeah, beautiful films. Yeah, they uh, follow um, a couple. Each film is made nine years later in real time. Mm -hmm. So you see them in their twenties, you see them in their thirties, oh, you see them cool. married in their forties. Oh, wow. I love when that stuff. And happens. it's um, tremendous, tremendous. Ethan Hawke and uh, Julie Delphi. Oh, wow. Beautiful okay. films. Jamie would like that. Yeah, okay, you, won't, you won't appreciate it. Jamie would like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. He's, he's a sensitive guy. Don't, listen, don't, don't let him fool you. He's a sensitive guy, man. Yeah. Uh, I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> but, um, yeah. You know, it's, fu it's funny with films. If something is really great, mm -hmm. let's say a Citizen Kane, yeah. you really have to pay 110% attention. Mm -hmm. No bathroom breaks, kitchen right. breaks. Right. Sometimes I just watch, like, I, I like watching grindhouse stuff one in the morning mm -hmm. where you could put it on pause you know it, yeah, yeah. it, it doesn't matter and it depends what, what frame of mind you're in yeah. same with TV I mean these long form series like The Wire very it's intense oh, you, yeah. have, you have to be ready to sit down and focus oh, yeah. it's, like a, it's like the style now they're actually shooting things to, to say like hey listen we we got 30 hours of, of footage that we could give. Some of them are 80 huge, hours. Yeah, huge story arcs too. Hours. It's like crazy. Game of Thrones is like yeah. 80 hours. Oh, insane. Cool, yeah. You put so much in that. And that's. I think that's an interesting thing though when you take that. I don't think, uh, I mean, I know people understand this concept, but you take, you. I think when people write films now, they, they almost forget that like if you're going to go see a movie that's an hour and a half to two hours, 
you really can't take the same approach that you do for TV because you really need a story arc that's going to go through and you're going to follow a few characters that you're going to care about by the end of this this two hours. Well, that again, short, again, right? that's the key word. You have to care about the characters. Yeah. And if you have 30 characters, how do you care about one more than the others? And you know, Siskel Niebert back in the day said... How do you break down a good versus bad movie? Yeah. A good movie is you couldn't walk out. You have to see the end. You 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 need to know what happens with these people. Yeah. If you could shut a movie off in the middle, there's something missing. Yeah. I mean, I'm sorry. Yeah, and like what happened with the film festival, right? We had wonderful films. We had Joan on this day. We had Lorelai Roots. And like I said, it's like the Empire Strikes Back, right? <laughs> when Vader says, so Luke, I am your father. You know, and I had to keep that climax going through the festival. And that's why it happened at the epic. I mean, some people were saying, like, wow, one of the most epic things out of the out of all these awesome movies in the film festival was was a proposal at yeah. the end when you use the F word, you know? It really was. Wow. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people were All proposals should have the F word. You're practicing right, you're practicing for down the road. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> I mean, let's just put it this way. I had that whole speech written in a whole year. One year wow. I had that thing. I didn't, I, and I'm one of those again, as writers and as an artist, you take pride in your art you know you want to be able to have your own song if it's a song or a mm -hmm. film or a photo or a painting and say you know what i want to smile i smile upon my creation with kindness the way i look at it and wow I, you know and that's the way i always go by you know mm -hmm. um when i took my wedding vows my, my wife is korean she was speaking like 10 words of english at the time and they did the whole spiel do you take this man to be your lawfully wedded husband in sickness and in health and she looks at me and she goes, what did he say? She had no idea what the guy was saying. So I said, I said, say I do. So she goes, yes. I said, no, no, say I do. She goes, yes. I said, no, say I do. And she said, I do. This really happened. I couldn't make this oh, up. Man. A true story. So uh, Jamie speaks English fluently. You're, you're good. Yeah. Don't worry. Oh, yeah. You're, you're covered. Yeah. You're covered. <laughs> But uh, so tell us about some career highlights. You, you... Um, yeah, so uh, I, uh, for me, I, you know, when I started this, I, I started working at Renaissance Fairs, um, which was pretty cool. It's a way to kind of get in into um, one Renaissance Fair is going on now uh, soon. The Midsummer Fantasy Renaissance Fair. I'll be performing uh, with a group called the Questless Company. We're a stunt sword fighting show. Um, but uh, but some highlights though, like going through that. I mean, it really got going for me about seven or eight years I've been doing this for about 15 years and um, learning stage combat through like Society of American Fight Directors wow. um, learning it through Art of Combat out of New York um, that's really where I grew more in Out of Art of Combat because a lot of the people in that uh, are true are professionals in the industry um, my one of my main mentors is Jared Kirby out of New York um, he's the New York chapter head um, and he's worked on a bunch of different films with a bunch of professional people um, I've learned tons from him um, and uh you know, I, I, through him, I got a chance to work with people like Kyle Rowlings, who is out of uh, Sydney, Australia, um, and he's you know he he worked on uh, he was in Star Wars, Spartacus. Um, uh, he's worked on tons of different awesome. things, and so these are some people that I get to that get to mentor me and, and show me how this works. Um, I, I I got the chance to work with. Uh, the mountain from Game of Thrones. I was brought into the Philadelphia. He's a big boy. Yeah, he's a big boy. He's yeah. a big boy. Um, the uh, Philadelphia Renaissance Fair um, with uh, the fight director there, which is the age. Uh, you have to see Night Riders. I know. I'm not going to be happy good. until you see this. I will, I will see it. Yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll talk to you about that. Um, but uh, I was brought in there um, with the fight director up there, um, and uh, I was brought in as an outside fight director to work with the mountain on a melee scene. He, he takes on four people. And um, so I, I got to be one of those. He's people. like the one guy. If it, it was insane. one against four, you figured a four uh, disadvantage. Yeah, exactly. That guy's huge, and that's how he played it. And he crushed, you know, he crushed my head, kind of like the watermelon style. He punched whoa, me in the face on whoa. the ground. It was the scariest thing I ever. No, not really. And have you ever gotten seriously hurt? Um, uh, no, uh, fortunately, no. Because in pro wrestling, the guys always tell me about accidents so and they get hurt. Pro wrestling, right? So I just to take a step back here, um, use the word stunt choreographer, and a lot of people. Uh, label us as stunt choreographers, stunt, but guys have died. They have doing yeah. stunts. Um, me, I, I, when I work stunts, I bring in someone who does stunts. So since I'm more of the fight, sword fight, right. sword play kind of guy, um, I know that aspect. So I, I concern, I determine myself as like a fight uh, or action director dealing more with that because I don't want to take anything from the people who do stunts. Stunts are crazy, and you get hurt doing stunts if you don't do it. 
I mean, these people, people have spend, died doing people have stunts. died doing them. They, yeah. you know, and not to say that what swinging a piece of metal at your head is not dangerous because it completely is. But, um, but yeah, I've been lucky so far that my only injury comes from a basketball injury in oh, high school, okay, in uh, college. Good to, <laughs> so, they had a... Yeah, and then even on the making of Bjorn on this day, yeah. actually the. Uh, Main villain actually brought in an actual real sword. Yeah, right? one of Whoa, the. Uh, close. Yeah, that was one of the things, and and you know, and again, when you look at like, um, it was a. That could be like Monty Python. Oops, we cut the actor's arm off. Sorry. Well, be, well, to change, to be fair though, when I found that out, I um, as the as the you know the fight coordinator, um, he didn't realize you know again he's yeah. you know he's done some stuff before, but he brought that in, and you know all the weapons on the set were mine at that point. Um, and his, I didn't, he came in later. We were already on field with doing, he was working his other scene, um, running his lines and stuff like that. And he didn't even realize it. He knew it was sharp, but, um, we started to walk his, until he decapitated yeah. well, no, the second the lead. Here's how it happened, right? Here's exactly how it happened. he wanted to do this move where he was like, can you, can you show me how to do this move where I like, I pop the pommel out and then slam the, the, cause it was like a katana. Yeah. So the, the sheath into it to knock him back. And I was like, ah, that's cool. So I tried it and I did that and I had a glove on luckily because in my brain, I had 30 things going on. I'm looking at the storyboards. I'm, you know, making sure that all my fighters are where they need to be and stuff. So I kind of played with the thing and I felt it catch my glove and I was like, is this thing sharp? Hmm. And he was like, he's like, yeah. Oh yeah. He's like, yeah. He's like, he had, he didn't realize. <laughs> yeah. He's like, oh yeah, yes. it's totally sharp. And I'm like, yeah. I'm like we can't wow. use this. Wow. So we changed. So we had in the moment, we had to change the choreo. Uh, we used a, a magical effect and. It was more like a force kind of push thing, um, which actually looks really cool. Well, um, um, even song. even uh, Bruce Lee's son, Brandon yeah. Lee, died on set in a tragic oh, accident. Yeah. Things, happen. Yeah. Things, Things happen. Things happen. Yeah. yeah, and that's yeah. You're starting to put a whole bunch of different elements in, so it's 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 very. I mean, that is the number one thing it, beyond anything. You know, when you take like um, a fight choreographer, a stunt choreographer, any of these people on set, like. If you're an actor, if you're listening right now and you're an actor and the stunt coordinator says don't do something, do not do it. Yeah. Please listen to them. Do not touch any weapons on the sets or do not touch uh-huh. anything that is you're not supposed to touch. It is like the number one thing that will get you f- sent home. And you know um, what? And we yeah. had a lot of positive feedback, even with me, like yeah. getting connected with him. Yeah. I, I, I've, I've learned, we've learned so much from each other, you know, yeah. from me learning the disciplinary actions of fighting, sword fighting, uh, Learning the disciplinary actions on how the cameras and how the shots are. So yeah. we, we actually learned a lot from each other. Yeah. And um, that's what, you know, and when you sometimes when you make a good product, to have the good people in there that actually care and that are ambitious yeah. and, and all that stuff where, hey, you know, what makes it really exciting is when you're learning from each other. Yeah. I'd like to see you on Game of Thrones wearing that Misfits uh, oh, yeah. sweater. Hard, hard, That'd be yeah. awesome. Oh, definitely. Yeah. I'd like to, I could see you on Game of <laughs> oh, Thrones. Yeah, you, you have the look. That's yeah. my, always been my dream to be on Game of Thrones. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There you go. Yeah. So, guys, plug anything you want to plug, any website, social media, sure. upcoming films, anything you want to yeah, plug. Yeah, so again, so um, so we're going to be film festivals. Uh, we got a list. We're going to start doing the film festival circuit with uh, Bjorn on this day and Laura Lyroon's Requiem. Um, so I'm going to be putting that on the Warhammer Cinema page on Facebook. Uh, you can follow us on there. Uh, we got a couple big projects coming up. We have uh, Death Mask, Dawn of the Imperfects, which is part of the Gods of the Paradox series. And then that'll lead to Death Label Society. And then on a side note from that, uh, Jamie Giordano is working on this film called Triquatra, which is a, it's an interesting, I don't want to reveal too much, but it's, let's just say there's a, it's, it, she was inspired by criminal minds, but also there's alter alternate dimensions involved with this criminal minds factor. So I'm just gonna okay. leave it as that. Yeah. So, okay. Anything yeah. you want to um, put? Yeah, sure. I mean, uh, uh, definitely. Uh, if you're looking for anybody in the New York area that is a uh, you know fight choreographer, um, you know you can you can go to chrispitlack.com. That's uh, my page. You can contact me there. Um, you can also talk to Art of Combat out of um, New York um, or. Actually, our comments kind of all over the place, but Jared Kirby, uh, jaredkirby.com. Um, he's a excellent guy out of New York City. Um, and uh, my, my company, Not In The Face Productions, um, we are working on a, uh, hopefully in 2019, we'll be coming out with uh, this web series. It's a post-apocalyptic fight, uh, fight series that um, uh, I don't want to say we are not 100% settled on the name yet, so I don't want to kind of... Okay. Throw that out there, but um, but yeah, we have a couple things in the works, and you know whatever else. 
comes up. When I was promoting today's show, I had a picture of you with a tattoo across yeah, your face. Totally. It looked like Mike Tyson. I, <laughs> I imagined you were going to be like the mountain when you came yeah, in. No, it's a nice, soft spoken guy, you know? <laughs> well, uh, I was pleasantly surprised. I, I pretend I pretend to like know what I'm doing, like fighting wise. And, like, you know, like I make it look like well, I'm see, big. Well, we talk about alter eagles, right? <laughs> yeah. When I put the mask on for Bjorn, I'm this arrogant miscreant, you know. You know, arrogant miscreant, I can, I could be an <laughs> asshole. When he puts the Camulus mask on, he's this villainous badass. Uh, <laughs> uh, right, right. Hell, I'm gonna freeze hell, no, no uh, whatever it takes. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's, it's a crazy thing. Yeah, that's well, crazy. that's why it's called acting. Yeah, that's, yeah. Right. that's exactly, it. Exactly. Yeah. I'll tell you what's interesting in pro wrestling, and we're gonna be talking pro wrestling oh, yeah. in a few minutes awesome. with uh, Mike Monty. Mm -hmm. um, in pro wrestling, many times in real life, the bad guys are super nice, oh, and the good guys are yeah. egomaniacs. Exactly. Not always, but in yeah. many cases. You, it's yeah. easier to play a different person than yourself sometimes, right? You could put on that character and be like, in, in, in real life, if you're a good guy, like you could be like, it's, it's easy to understand what makes you a, a yeah. jerk. My, my, pers <laughs> my personal friends in wrestling who, who are legends... Um, guys like Jimmy Valiant yeah. and uh, Nikolai Volkov and the late Johnny <laughs> Valiant <laughs> and um, these guys were generally villains yeah, oh yeah, and um, it's interesting because they're the sweetest guys in the world you know and you know, in wrestling they go back and forth oh, but yeah. generally they're known as villains so or heel right was, heels, yeah, heels heels in the face, yeah. so um, in just a few we're going to talk wrestling with Mike Monty we're going to talk TV and cinema with Erica A we're going to have mentalist Robin Channing and in just an hour or so on Unger the Radar pop culture show these gentlemen will be returning so uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Unger the Radar with Randy Unger and uh, if you enjoy superheroes and pop culture uh, Unger the Radar at 1 p.m. 1 15? 1 15, Jim? 1 p.m. 1 p.m., around 1 p.m. Yeah. So uh, we just want to thank you guys for appearing on uh, Village Connection Radio. Well, thank, thank you so, you so much. much. Thank you thank so you much. Guys. So uh, you wrestling fans, stick around. And uh, do, you, do you have my trailer queued up, Jim? Sure. This is my trailer. Um, when I say my trailer, I'm the associate producer on 350 Days, coming to theaters July 12th. Starring superstar Billy Graham, Bret Hart, Greg Valentine, Tito Santana, and many of the uh, greatest legends in the history awesome. of the business. One night only, fathomevents.com. Check it out, folks. Fifty days a year as a wrestler on the road. Maybe it's a sickness. Three hundred and fifty days a year. A lot of physical pain. A lot of loneliness. You have no home life whatsoever. Piper and me riding down the road, doing eight balls of cocaine. I'm sure it broke up marriages. How many guys uh, in the wrestling business have a family left when they're done? Most of them lose it. I couldn't have children. I couldn't put them on a turnbuckle while mommy worked. I look forward to it, bro. You know why? Because I love it so much, it's in my heart. When you're famous, you don't have to go look for trouble. Trouble comes knocking on your door. I hit the bars. That was my character. Sitting in a room with a bunch of wrestlers doing cocaine, we really got to know each other. I would take a lot of downers, and I, I did have problems with the with the downers. I'm embarrassed to admit it, but I was not a faithful husband from the first day for the whole time on the road. I lived a double life. I needed it. It was like, I'm not getting the love I needed home. Would I do, oh, would I do, oh my God, I am afraid to say I would do it again. I wouldn't change a thing. No regrets. I loved everything I did. I actually wish I could do it all over again. What I want to tell you, you know, to make some big money in wrestling, you had to wrestle every night of the week, $30 every day. So you had to wrestle six and seven times every week just to earn your money. 350 days on the road with wrestlers, a living hell.
All right. We are back with the Evan Ginsberg Show at VillageConnectionRadio.com. We have the incredible two-headed transplant here. You remember that film? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so uh, we are joined by Mike Monty. And once again, I am uh, disoriented because you don't have the sunglasses. And, no sunglasses uh, today. Just uh, regular regular mode today. You're, you're, mode. you're not in gimmick. Not in gimmick. From Monty and the Pharaoh, every Thursday, 8.05 p.m. And that's an all-wrestling show here at VillageConnectionRadio.com. And you have two major events. One on um, June 9th, right here at Village Connection Radio, 11 Lake Place in Huntington. Dr. D. David Schultz will be making a rare autograph appearance. And this is his book, obviously. And uh, the forward of the book is by Bret Hart, who's the star of 350 Days. So there's uh, six degrees of separation always in wrestling. And uh, tell us about, first of all, tell us about the... June 9th signing because Dr. D is very rare in this area. Uh, Dr. D, uh, yes, definitely very rare coming to the island. Uh, I think this will be his own only signing this year and wow. maybe his final signing from what I understand. He's not big on traveling, so this is a, it's a must-do event for sure. And who's he with? He He's with the uh, franchise Shane Douglas, uh, WWF, uh, ECW, and Dominic Danucci, yeah, Dominic Danucci, the I, WWWF, and I saw right. Gary Michael Capetta also. Gary Michael Capetta been, right. has been added to the uh, to the event, and let's not forget our friend, the uh, legend Butcher Blackwell, will also That's be there. Right. Yeah. So um, that is that is uh, on June lineup, nine, bro. and tell uh, folks the time. Uh, Four o'clock uh, till seven. Uh, he'll be here. Autographs, Polaroids, and also added to the deal is uh, seats links. Uh, Dot com has offered up uh, two tickets to raffle for the, I believe, July 17th MSG event, Ronda Rousey's first appearance in MSG. Uh, So that'll be a raffle, $10 a raffle ticket. So we got a lot going on. It's going to be a pretty exciting time for us. And I was at Madison Square Garden when um, Dr. D and Roddy Piper wrestled Andre the Giant and Jimmy Snooker, (laughs) and they carried Andre out in the stretcher, which was like unheard of. Yes, That's how tough these guys were. Absolutely. Dr. D and Roddy Piper. Yep. I'll never forget that, because Andre was like Superman. Yeah. Andre certainly liked Piper, right? He would sell for Piper any day of the the week. So I I tell people all the time, seeing Piper live mid-80s was one of the most exciting things I've ever seen, ever. I mean, James Brown, Roddy Piper, P Funk uh, back in the day. Uh, 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 I mean, there's very that's few things. Yeah, that is very a few list, things right? like Roddy Piper Live. The Road Warriors at their peak. Yep. Hey, yep. Mike, let's not forget the important event that's coming up next week. Yeah, we have another event on uh, June 3rd. I mean, now Sunday, that's really blowing everyone's mind. Yeah, so June 3rd, we have uh, wrestling icon Marty Jannetty, one half mm. of the Rockers. Uh, <sighs> Former Intercontinental Champion, w- wow. also on 350 Days, That's correct? Right. That's yep, right. yep. Um, he'll be joined by uh, Sir Richard Michaels uh, from ECW. Yeah, he, he was in ECW, and he later went to WWE. He wrestled Flair, Undertaker, everybody. But in ECW, he was teamed with Chris Candido. So uh, Sir Richard Michaels and yep. Butcher Blackwell. And then Butcher Blackwell will also be here. And again, SeatsLink.com is also... Given two tickets for that event, will be raffled for ten dollars for that same MSG card with Ronda Rousey's debut. Wow. So again, some exciting stuff, and you never know what else may be in. Gary just joined the uh, event June 9th. Who knows? June third. Maybe I'll so, be there. You'll be yeah. there. Yeah, yeah which is going to interview some of these guys on radio after. <laughs> exactly. So be fun. That's going to be, be great. And you never know if a heartbreak kid, kid might show up on a June right. third. Right? I doubt it very much, but you <laughs> never know. You never know. And we're also going to have um, one of our show hosts here dressed up as uh, Pinup, right? Oh, thanks for reminding me. Teresa's coming. Teresa from uh, Pinup's, from Pinup's cool, cool Cats, cats and, and comedians. Uh, comics. All right, so that'll never be great. hurts to have a beautiful woman. Oh no, that's you know, you can, and that's yeah. Just so as long as Dennis is show and just as long things. as Dennis is dressed up, we'll be okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If Dennis right. dresses up, we're out of here. But yeah, they're going to be two great events, and I'm um, looking forward to your interview, which is going to be fantastic. Yeah, we're going to go live afterwards, right on air, and yep. uh, be great to have these legends in the studio. It's going to be a great time. It's going to be a great time. Yeah, right here on Village Connection. So uh, tell a friend to tell a friend, as they used to say, and uh, yeah. you know, it's funny. As, as a kid, I would wait outside the garden for autographs, and it was among some of my greatest childhood experiences, but also among my worst. Because what would happen was Bruno was the, so gracious. Billy Graham was so nice. Lou Albano was nice. Most of the villains were nice. 
and Dusty Rhodes and Andre the Giant would never, ever sign for us mm. kids. I'm wow. talking kids. I'm not even talking teenagers. They wouldn't sign. Wow. So sometimes, you know, you were disillusioned. Yeah. But guys like Marty Janetti are super nice guys. So it's nice when you meet some, when your heroes aren't zeros. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. And that's what you're going to experience when you meet guys like Marty Janetti. Yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be a great time. It's going to be a great time all the way around. And we're probably in the best place to have it right here in Rockstar. Studios and Village Connection Radio. Right? This is just the beginning. It is just the beginning. This is Eleven Lake Place, and um, you know, come on up. You can come to the train. We're only what? How how far are we from 1. the train? One point six miles from the train. It's good like job. A, it's like you could walk it if you if if you're in good shape, or it's an eight dollar Uber or a two <laughs> two and a quarter uh, bus ride. It's not a big deal getting here, folks. You know, and if I get add to it, uh, you know, Sunday is supposed to be a beautiful day. It's the There's event a park is, right here. The park. It's a, it's, a, it's a later on in the day, so you get most of your day done. And then right after that, you're actually bringing rock and wrestling back, right? Because Everclear is playing in the Paramount at 7 o'clock. Wow. Yeah. Go get a signing from Marty Gennetti, Sir Richard Everclear. Michaels, and Butcher Blackwell. Grab a sandwich and then yeah. head on out to see Everclear. You can't get a yeah. better event than that. And if you're lucky enough, win two seats to Madison Square, Gar- uh, yeah. Madison Square Garden to and, see Ronda Rousey. And let me just say as a long-term fan and quote-unquote historian... The, the Rockers, Janetti and Michaels, were probably one of the five greatest teams oh, of all yeah. time. Oh, by and, far. I, I mean, tremendous, tremendous. By far. And Top five or ten, easy, easy. Uh, some of my greatest moments with them, uh, WrestleMania five. Uh, you know, seeing them live, and you know, a lot of people don't notice, but they did win the tag team titles on a Saturday night's main event with well, against the Hart Foundation. I remember the them in the AWA falls. before that. Oh, they were Midnight crazy. Rockers. Midnight Rockers, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. That you know what, and they were they were they were the originators of this type of high flying wrestling. Yeah. No one did. Yeah, they kind of they work. did this stuff long before the Hardys. Oh and, yeah, by uh, far yeah. and better. Yeah, and better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, terrific. I mean, Shawn Michaels is probably you know one of the greatest wrestlers of all time, and they and together they were one of the greatest tag teams of all time. Uh you know when you got probably maybe the greatest independent uh, individual wrestler, singles wrestler around on your team. And you know, Janetti was no slouch. Hall of Famer oh, in my Hall of Famer in my. You know, uh, it's you... always it's always hard. You know, I'm, I'm speaking honestly here. Like like um, Larry Holmes followed Muhammad Ali. Mm-hmm. It was tough. You know, Shawn Michaels. It's hard to touch this guy, but Janetti was great. He was great. Janetti was great. He was great. But you know, you sometimes it's it's hard when you like like a Holmes Ali scenario. It's it's similar. Similar. Yeah, it? without a doubt. And I mean, look. To be honest, all these wrestlers come into both events. They've all had their moments, and they've all been great. I mean, Doctor D, I, you know, I went Dominic to the garden Danucci. to watch it. Dominic Danucci, I Headline, mean, headlined oh. Australia. He headlined in the states also. Incredible, yeah, incredible. Danucci was a big. I used to see Danucci. All he was a perennial WWF tag champ with yep. uh, Victor Rivera, with um, Pat Barrett, and, and and somebody else I forget. But he was several time tag team champion and. Always a top star. And Shane Douglas was great. Great. Shane Douglas, probably one of the more underrated wrestlers out there. Great mic skills, great wrestler, just overall great performer. I mean, I'm, I'm uh, honored to have them here, so it's going to be great. And Gary Michael Capetta, one of the great talk. It's not as good as Mike Monty, but a great talker. Oh, my God. Oh, wow. Wow. Good. Yeah. I got to tell you, I, uh, over the last year since I've been involved in this, I've had uh, two interviews with Mr. Capetta. And he's nothing but a gentleman. One of the really great guy, um, just and terrific. He, he guy. loves the he loves the history. He loves the business. Um, and you know, if you go to his, uh, he has a, 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 a tour he goes around with, right? Bob he has Smith. a one man show. Yeah, I, wow. I went I went to Queens last year with the Pharaoh. The Pharaoh was a little little crazy, as you <laughs> would know, but <laughs> uh, but uh, it was a great a great show to go to. So I recommend that show also. I'm so used to seeing you two guys with the glasses that when I walked into the green room, I'm like, it took like a second to like identify you. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. We got we got to stay away from each other like during the week because you know you wouldn't believe this, but the conversations you you have with him or how he performs, that's him in real life. So it's like you can only take take him for so so long for that amount of time. So he's very he's, he has a lot of energy. That guy. He is uh, jacked. I mean, up we do crazy. early morning radio, and this guy's like on 18 cups of coffee. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure, but, for sure. Uh, but we want so plug plug your show while, you, while you're here. Monty Nefaro every Thursday from eight oh five, the old TBS. Uh, well, six oh five, but we went eight oh five to nine o'clock. We cover the world of professional wrestling, 
and uh, some other stuff. And uh, it's an up and coming show, and we we enjoy it. Thank you. Are you a uh, film and TV buff? I am. Would you like to stick with us for the next segment? Sure, if you don't mind. Absolutely. Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. All right. So when we come back, we're going to talk film. We're going to talk TV with media expert Erica A. And uh, Rosie Greer, myself, the incredible two-headed <laughs> transplant, will continue uh, on this mission to entertain you this Sunday morning. John the Priest Anthony. John the Priest Anthony. There you go. You ever see the incredible two-headed transplant? No, I have not. I grew, I grew up on American International Pictures. You guys will appreciate this. AIP, they used to shoot these movies on 20 grand. Yeah. Hell Up in Harlem, Black Caesar, Foxy Brown, you know, uh, low budget horror. Foxy I love Brown. that stuff. Anytime Pam Greer took her clothes off, I was a happy boy. <laughs> <laughs> most people were. Yeah, most people were. And, and you know what's interesting with Pam Greer? She happens to be a damn good actress. Yeah. Great actress. She's great really actress. a good actress. Yeah. So she came a long way from like, you know, uh, you know, she was always like in a cage in the Philippines. Uh. You know, <laughs> it was always. She came a long way. You know, she even so. did a decent job in uh, Escape from L.A. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I like so, that. Yeah, Pam Greer is a serious actress, but what a beautiful woman. Beautiful. Woman. Love Pam Greer. Yeah. <laughs> Can't go wrong with Pam Greer or Fred Williamson or uh, American International Pictures. Wow. See, uh, it's funny. When I watch a Quentin Tarantino film, yeah. I know exactly where he, quote unquote, borrowed from. Exactly. I, I know which Spaghetti Western, yeah. which Kung Fu yeah, movie, because yeah, yeah. I saw the same stuff. Yep, yep. I saw the same. We grew up on the same stuff. <laughs> so wow. uh, that's true. When we come back, folks, Erica A., I'm going to talk movies, film, and uh, later in the show, Mentalist, Robin Channing. You've never seen anything like this. I'm really convinced this guy is a mutant. He has wow. unbelievable powers. I should give his own franchise. Yeah. That's right. You got to get wow. him in your movies. Seriously. <laughs> we'll be right back, folks.
we are back with the Evan Ginsberg Show at VillageConnectionRadio.com. We now have Mike Monty lurking in the corner back there, uh, you know, because we're trying to get everybody in. And we have media expert, and she's a, a videographer and editor in her own right, Erica A. And uh, yes, she you. watches more TV than any human being on planet Earth. <laughs> Tell us what you're watching. Well, right now, most shows have ended, except that we still have Westworld and Into the Badlands going on, Sunday night's programming. But for now, it seems like we're at the end. The Arrowverse has hit their finales. Krypton, the overrated show, which for some reason is coming back for another year, had its finale. We've got Shadowhunters on hiatus. I don't know where it disappeared to. I don't think it was its finale. You've got all the network shows. I can't... What do you think of the networks just like chopping their lineups? That's what I want to know. Let's chat about that. All I watch is This Is Us. (laughs) (laughs) That survived the chop. But I mean, I looked at the list and apart from it... Apart from Brooklyn Nine Nine moving from Fox to NBC, I believe it is, unless it moved to CBS. But one show got saved. But so many shows that critics were talking about and had fan bases just disappeared. Well, I think everything is, is so you know splintered. There's, there's so many places to watch, and people don't even watch live anymore. They yes, they, they watch DVR it after, or they, yeah, or they so, go to on demand. To you know, two you days spend later. a fortune on a show, and I mean, you're not getting the audience that you expect. So, and you don't know if you're even getting the audience. I mean, like in a chat form that someone has for the Arrowverse, I know that they always say, "Don't come on for two days because I'm too. I have to wait till it comes up." Right. I watch a lot of stuff on Hulu after the fact. Well, Hulu does get a lot of the shows, but I don't. Does it actually get it that year or not till the next year, like Netflix? Sometimes they get the next day. Okay, so then Hulu is the way to go to keep up with what's going on now. But the thing is, uh, give me one second. The thing is, we um, we have so much content today between Amazon and Netflix. Well, that's why I always say you gotta watch three things at one time. Roku. It's overwhelming. (laughs) It's absolutely overwhelming. But that's why I always say you got to make sure to watch three things at one time because if you dedicate a whole hour of your life to one show, you're never going to keep up. The head that you just saw mysteriously, that was his first <laughs> trick. That was Robin Channing. This is live radio, yep. glitches and all. He'll appear again later. He's yes. quite the magician. It was like the headless torso of Robin Channing. And the, now, now the door's opening. He's doing I, I don't think tricks. he's got the hang of this live radio <laughs> thing yeah. yet. So, yes. Yeah, so, have you been keeping up with Westworld? I mean, you spent all year... No, I haven't. Year, I've been so busy promoting 350 days. You can days. spend all year saying Westworld, Westworld, Westworld. I'm like, here I am. <sighs> it's time to talk Westworld. Gonna, I think I'm going to see it after the fact. I'm all busy right. Well, I weeks. guess after the finale, you'll have to tell me what you but, think. But John the Priest to wanted to add something to the conversation. You know, um... Even YouTube Red's becoming popular because now they just brought back the Cobra Kai series. Uh, yes. Yeah. And um, yeah. I got to say... I, Which everyone says is amazing. It is, it is so phenomenal, that show. And it's uh, it took 34 years just for William Zabka and you know and Ralph Macchio just to get together with these ex- the original executive producers that were involved with the but original I've... Karate Kid. And it's just... Uh, I'm like... I, I, I binge-watched the whole entire <laughs> thing. And I'm like, wow, this is awesome. You know, this but do you think it took this long because it took this long for the idea of the reboot now? The revival show seems to be the new fad. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you've got Fuller House, the Full House family. You've got Will and Grace. You've got Roseanne mm-hmm. now. You had Gilmore Girls reunite. You had Boy Meets World come back for a while. You have um, Murphy Brown coming back in the fall. I want to see the father and those best cast reunite. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> wow. That's probably not going to happen. They the love books. Unless they're walkers. They're probably I want walkers, the ghost but... of Bewitched to come back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think it's nice the way they did it, like a little differently, though, on like, yeah. YouTube. So they didn't take the same approach that ever, you know, like it's just a little. It, it just YouTube. seems like this generation kind of steals a lot yeah. from. From the or past generation. Cars, well, yeah. well, the thing Even is, like the design of their cars. I mean, everything. You know, what there's I'm a built in audience. So they, have, they know. <laughs> yeah, that's what they're smart. X amount they're of smart. people going to watch it. They're going to yeah. get their generation and our generation. Yeah, yeah. they're going to get their kids to be like, yep. you got to watch this because yep. this is what I watched when I was a kid. But exactly. then there's the problem. Does the old generation care more about the old characters? And does the new generation have no feeling vested in the new characters? Both. So they have to balance it out. It's like. Okay. If I if I may, my wife, we watched Cobra Kai. We binge binge watch, which I never do, but I had okay. to. It was so good. Yeah. My wife was offended. She felt <laughs> they were making a joke out of the original movie. She thought it kind of ruined. <laughs> For me, I loved every second of it. I yeah. I thought it was incredible. Did you cry? Yeah, 
I knew it. Actually, Karate King Kong today too. But <laughs> <laughs> Mike's going through a sensitive phase. Yes, right now. it's the rain. This is us. That is an incredible <laughs> yes. show. I, lo- I love that show. Real cheer. Tear How many people in this room watch This Is Us? Sometimes. Oh, okay, good. Sometimes. It's yeah. best show on television. It's yeah. my number three though, so it only gets about a few fragments of my seconds because okay. it was on in the same same time slot of Bull. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry, Bull came first. I've been a fan of them of him since all the way back to Dark Angel. <laughs> all right, let's go around the room real quick. What, what's your favorite show, Jim? On TV. Yeah. yeah. Oh, what I, what's must see? What where you catch every episode? One I, or two um, shows? I kind of like Live PD. I never saw it. Yeah, because I really don't <laughs> like anything on TV, honestly. <laughs> I mean, I like movies and stuff. I, I I tend to watch more movies than TV. Okay. My wife watches. Um, I, I guess I watch them too because I'm sitting next to her. But well, the reality shows, the stupid shows that don't. Yeah, make I can't any watch sense. those today. <laughs> yeah, but I don't even think my channel goes under twenty seven ever. Hmm. You know. Well, my cable starts at like 120. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what What's must see for you? Must see. Um, I mean, I, I'm not so caught up with everything. I mean, one series that I did watch, and I usually tend to keep watching, is uh, Walking Dead. Yeah, me too. It's you know, Game of Thrones, yeah, Walking Game Dead, Thrones, oh, yeah. Walking Dead. I like, I like so, do you Bates. ever catch Into the yeah. Badlands afterwards? Oh, yeah, I didn't that's see good. that one. Oh, that's yeah. great. Yeah. Was no. that? Did you ever catch Into the Badlands? That comes. I, right I've after. started. Yes, I've started watching Into the Badlands, and um, but I'm. Again, my time with everything that's going on, like, I don't get to sit down and watch. You know, I'm working on movies now, so it's a little different. I don't spend as much time <laughs> watching them unless I feel that somebody gives me a good, you know, like uh, like a good uh, request or, or something. Say, hey, please watch this for me. So, I think you'd enjoy it though, as a choreographer. I, yeah, no, you're absolutely right. It and is that's incredible actually what I did. the way that's they why I started. Do- okay. Yep. Yep. And Mike, what's m- what's must see for you? Uh, <laughs> this is us. Yeah. Uh, one one yeah, series that you guys have can't mentioned believe that I'm a big fan of is Glow. Um, I love oh, Glow. Glow's oh, great. Yeah. Glow's great. Yeah. Netflix. Yes, I did watch that. That was so awesome. those are must watches for me. Yeah. <laughs> John? Glow was awesome. Well, recently, um, uh, Jamie got me into watching uh, Criminal Minds. And, okay. Uh, and also Law and Order, the SVU unit. So now okay. I'm actually starting. I'm, I'm now I'm hooked. Now I'm like I'm constantly binge watching. She got me binge watching this now. So it's uh, I gotta say it's pretty. You know, you know I was like Vikings and Game of Thrones and all like the Punisher and anything on Netflix. I like and, Punisher. I wasn't. I don't think it's as good as Game of Thrones or Walking oh, yeah, Dead, but I liked it. Yeah. Yeah. But I gotta say, you know, just looking at it from a detective side side part of things, it's it's different, and I like that suspense now. You know, I'm getting into it. Mm-hmm. And Erica, of the 200 shows you watch, which five <laughs> do you have to okay, watch? Okay, 500? Well, I would say my maybe my top 10. Yeah. Seven of them just went off the air, so oh, I'm crushed. I mean, we lost Suits, though, which had a much better wedding than There's the no royal wedding. There's no point in continuing. Bro. No, they, Suits had a correct ending. It had to end so that Meghan Markle No, no, Markle I mean, there's no point in you continuing in life because you can't oh, no. shows. I've got one more year of Gotham and Supernatural, oh, the Brutal. show that's never going to end. I have invested in it since I was like a teen, preteen. I don't know. That's still going strong, so I'm still totally vested in that, even though I don't know why I'm watching sometimes. They've gotten so old looking, they can't zoom in on their uh, eyes like this Ageism. Wide. Ageism. <laughs> what else? <laughs> oh, I'm still doing Gotham. I'm totally vested in that. Waiting for Game of Thrones. Outlander will be back in the fall. They finally had their marathon. They haven't announced a date yet, but they're saying it's coming. Because I just still say you don't give stars enough credit as a channel. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So I, I go through the same scenario all the time. Somebody <laughs> will tell me. It's almost the same conversation, word, word for word. You have to see this show. It's really good. And I go, how many hours? And they go, it's about 80 hours. I go, really good isn't enough. It has to be great yeah, yeah. before I spend 80 hours. That's like a job. Yeah, it has to be The Wire or Game of Thrones well, great. Well, Outlander is getting close to 80 hours now because you have missed three or but four years ago. But unless it's great, I'm not, I'm not, it's and too much of an I investment. And plus, I still love all my anime. And you always ask questions. I'm like, you don't know anything about anime. There's yeah, no point. nothing about anime. What, what about, did anyone watch Bates? Bates Motel? No. None of you guys watched that? I got no. into the first season. It was really good. I mean, that was great. I would watch the first segment because I was ending. watching on what came on right before it. Okay. <laughs> Has anyone seen Barry on HBO? I heard it's excellent. Yes. It, it is excellent. excellent. Yeah, I, have to, yeah. I have to see that. Westworld's great. Yeah. I've never seen that. Is that based great. on a movie from yeah. the 70s? HBO. Yes. Oh, that was one of my it's favorite movies. And it's tremendous. tremendous. And it only just started its second season. Okay. Yeah. That's yeah. Yeah. 
though I have to say it's a little weird this year. They've left Westworld and they've proven there are other equally strange theme park worlds. Well, they had another movie after Westworld. What was the, they had one after Westworld? Future World. Future World. Okay, mm-hmm. no, we haven't went to Future World. Okay. We've went to a place that I don't think they've given a name, which is like Arabian World. Gotcha. They were riding on camels <laughs> and they were going to go on an elephant, on a tiger hunt. <laughs> Until that didn't work out. That's in the crazy. last episode, which I thought I was truly going to hate, I thought it was Samurai World. It's called Shogun World. Uh, where they, oh, but I was felt vested in it because one of my favorite Japanese um, actors is playing one of the main characters. So I was like, oh, look, there he is. And I just kind of stared and went, there he is. <laughs> and I went through the whole plot without being annoyed by it. <laughs> there is so much on TV that if you live to 120, you couldn't make a dent on it. <laughs> Oh, dent yeah. in it and and it's it's almost overwhelming and at, at the same time the purpose of of life isn't to sit in front of a box all day you know you you guys want to create art yeah. not yes. just watch it yeah. so that's what commercial breaks are for <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah okay a tough tough question uh we, we have to do this real quick because mm-hmm. robin channing's gonna amaze us in a few minutes um Greatest shows ever. I'm going to go with The Wire and The Prisoner. The Prisoner with Patrick McGowan. That was brilliant. Sure was what do you guys think? Yeah. yeah. You don't have to agree with me. What do, you, what do you think? I think Breaking Bad was an awesome Breaking movie. Bad, yeah. yeah. I loved Breaking Bad. Hmm. Uh, I mean, I loved uh, I loved Walking Dead, but I loved uh, Spartacus as well. The series. Oh, I never Spartacus saw it. was a great I show. Almost that. as good Runs as Rome. Yeah, Rome was actually. Was I like Rome. Yeah, I, I really, I really haven't committed to anything like those. But I'd have to say Twilight uh, Zone, original Twilight Zone. I, I, I like, I like that Bates Motel one. That was great. Greatest show of all time, really? All that time. Great? No, oh, wow. I'm just, I'm just pointing like. Oh, I, I don't really, I, you know what it is? I watch so many things. I don't think I could possibly even come up with one. I'll go with uh, Kirby Enthusiasm. Oh, I, love yeah, okay. I love that. All right, yeah, I love that. I love that. I'll go with that. And I'll go with The Sopranos. Oh yeah, yeah, Sopranos. that's that's a good one. I didn't those know that. Like, I could not, I cannot miss. Like the day they come. No, out. Sopranos like, was great, man. Yeah, Sopranos was but awesome. Really I love it. But can it ever come back? I mean, Sopranos. I mean, they Without lost Tony. their main character. No, yeah, that, no. that you know they'll do a prequel. Do prequel <laughs> okay. Yeah, they can do a prequel. Okay. Kirby enthusiasm could come back. It just gets better. Tomorrow he can it come back. It Six Feet though? Under was great. Yeah. Oh, that was a great one. Oh, yeah, yeah, that was good. Though, as I gotta say, trapped in a room full of men, I have to say, shame on all of you picking all contemporary shows. Not a single one of you has something. I said Twilight Zone. Okay. Uh, all right. so Prisoners, 1967. <laughs> for me, it was so, all about Sons of Anarchy. It was for me, you know. <laughs> the funniest, the funniest episode of Curb Your Enthusiasm when was when Wanda Sykes <laughs> said his dog was racist. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> How funny was that? That was hilarious. Yeah. Oh my god. Crazy stuff. Anyway, anything you want to plug? Oh no, nothing right now. But thank you for asking. But I do always look for new projects. Email me, Erica, E R I C K A dot A two six eight at hotmail dot com. I'm always around, except when I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> and why don't why don't you stick around? And you could be Robin Channing's lovely assistant. He could nice. saw you in half or whatever he's gonna do. Oh, yes. Okay. Isn't he amazing? Nice. He is amazing. He is amazing. <laughs> except when he sticks his head in in the middle of a uh, interview. <laughs> That's right. So, whatever. Uh-huh. It's live radio, folks. Uh-huh. We roll with everything. Uh-huh. That's right. So. Um, why don't we all stick around and we'll enjoy uh, Robin's set. And as I said earlier, um, Randy Unger's Unger the Radar. If you like this kind of uh, chat about pop culture, movies, TV, we're going to do more of it from one to two. And uh, check out Don't Call Me Fake, uh, Dr. D. David Schultz's autobiography. Mm-hmm. And if you think this guy's scary, here he is with a gun. It's even oh, scarier. <laughs> this is a big boy. I would. This is like. This is like the. Him and New Jack are the two guys you would never want angry at you. No, that's, <laughs> right. that's right. That's, that's right. right. Unless you have a bulletproof window between you two. <laughs> oh, man. Dr. D. David Schultz, um, Saturday, June 9, right here at VillageConnectionRadio.com right Village with Dominic DiNucci, Shane Douglas, Butcher Blackwell, Gary Michael Capetta. This is going to be a big, big oh. show, folks. So uh, check it out. And Saturday, excuse me, Sunday, June 3rd, Marty Gennetti, Butcher Blackwell, Butcher Blackwell, Sir Richard Michaels. Am I forgetting anybody? No, you got it. Just don't forget that you're going to have a live interview with Marty Gennetti at that right. desk. That's right. So, uh, stand by. Stand by, folks. It'll be great. All right, so let's get it. I've lived in my head now for too long. It's about time that I step up from my songs. I came back just to find out where.
We are on. Okay, welcome back to Legends TV. Robin Channing here, the I guess official or unofficial magician slash mentalist for uh, you know Legends TV at least, or the Evan Ginsberg show actually, because you know he used to call it Legends TV and so forth. So I'm so used to it, you know, from back in the day. So you know, okay, my bad. <laughs> anyway, all right, Evan Ginsberg show. Well, welcome back. All right, Robin Channing here. I made my introductions. I'm sorry. What's your name? My name is John Dupriest Anthony. John, okay, all right, and uh, Mike, I've already spoken with, and you are, sir? Chris Dillon. Chris and Erica, of course, Hi. all right, all right. So, you know what, let me try a few experiments here. I got pretty much the carte blanche for this show, so I'm just going to uh, do certain things that I do in my Times Square show at LOL Comedy Club. I was there last night, by the way, I did a shift, so yay, that's a name drop. <laughs> yeah, all right, <laughs> all right. <laughs> and uh, I'll be dropping a few more things, so. But, you know, let, to, to start off with, you gotta warm up here. Uh, I'm sorry, Chris was it? John. John, good. Okay, that's correct. All right, John. Uh, uh, John, and you're Chris, yes? Yes. And you're Mike, and you're Erica. All right, good. Then we got all that set up. Now, okay. So, uh, John, if you were, we didn't prearrange any of this, right? You guys, we just met. No. Yes, I am. Erica, we, we've known each other, but nothing yeah, has been prearranged. I didn't know anything about the tricks. I've been okay, here. very good, very good. All right, so, if you were to name a playing card, any card you wanted, what would it be? Ace. Ace of spades. Ace of spades, okay. Now, was there any way I could have anticipated that particular choice? Uh, no. So there's no way I could have known that he would pick the ace of spades? No. There's no way. No <laughs> way, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? Awesome. Yeah, right? Right? Yeah, yeah. Now you know what he's about. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah. All right. So, uh, Chris, if you were to name a card of your own, what would it be? Uh, the three of hearts. The three of hearts. All right. Now, again, good choice. There's no way I could have anticipated that, right? I mean, I'm a loving guy. But okay. okay, very good, very good. All right, now, if you were to name a number, you know, a small number, what would it be? Four. Four, you sure? Mm -hmm. Turn over four cards. Okay. okay. Whoa, turn over. Okay. One, two, three, and on the fourth card, what did you say, three of hearts? Wow. Oh, oh, damn! Wow. There we have that. Yeah, cool this, cool this, cool this. Wow. I see where we're going to go. Wow. All right. All right. Holy cow. Mike. <laughs> Your turn. Name a card. Oh, boy. Uh, Suicide King. Suicide King. I never knew, learned the nickname. Oh, uh, Suicide King. I know it's like this, but it's well, a red. Well, I'll make it easier. How about King of Spades? King Ooh. of Spades. Okay. That, yeah. Of, of all the kings, you have to pick the suicide wow. one. I know, right? So let's see how we're going to make this work. Let's see. Uh, first of all, we'll do this. We'll do this. We're going to do this three at random. In other words, I'm going to use your intuition. All right, so say stop anytime you want. Stop. All right, so you stop me here. Yes, sir. Well, at least he stopped me at a spade. But even better was that he stopped me over there. Look at that. Wow. Oh. Damn. Woo. I know, right? Uh, what the hell? <laughs> actually, let's, uh, Erica, your turn. <laughs> Name a card. Okay, uh, the Queen of Diamonds. The Queen of Diamonds. Mm -hmm. You would. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. So, okay. All right. You know what? Here, I'll make things a lot more challenging for myself. Two jokers, as you can see, right? Uh -huh. All right. Duh. All right. Now, yours was a very statistically improbable card. So, Fine. but I will use statistics and probability to my advantage because with a joker on bottom and joker on top, with one hundred percent probability, your queen of diamonds is between the two jokers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> of course. Of course. No, no, no. But it's a true statement because in a moment of less than attention, notice the jokers have relocated. I don't know if the camera can see this, but check this out. In the center of the deck. Remember what I said before, between the two jokers oh, yeah. would be your queen of diamonds? Wow. wow. Oh, heck yes. You know what? Jim. What the hell? I know, right? Your turn. Name a card. Um, I'm gonna say the uh, Jack of Spades. The Jack of Spades. No. That's correct. I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, Jack of Spades. You know what? You've seen me shuffle the cards in you know fairly professional manner as such, right? Well, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a shuffle that is stupid, <laughs> even by magician standards. I mean, look at look, look at this. It's just. Face up instead of face down. I mean, like, why? What? What? what what's the? What's the whole purpose of this? I mean, uh -huh. I mean, come in. You see, you see how, what, how much of a mess we have here. But you see, there's this concept called the Persian flaw. You ever heard of that? Persian carpet makers. 
they believe that they have to leave an intentional flaw in their carpets because they believe only God can achieve perfection. So I'm going to I'm going to employ the concept of a Persian flaw because not only do I repair the deck, I leave behind a single meaningful imperfection. Mm. All right, you see, do you see how that works, uh, Jim? You said the jack of spades, yes? And it looks like this, doesn't it? Oh, <laughs> oh heck, yes! <laughs> now, you see how I pretty much got everybody in the studio here, you know that? But you know, but this time around, I like to employ test conditions. So for, to this end, I'm going to need two volunteers to join me on this platform. I've got John over here. I need one more person to uh, help me out. Uh, okay, Erica. Right, right. 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 Actually, wait. Uh, before we employ volunteers, Erica, you don't have any pockets on your person, no. do you? Do you have any pockets on your person, John? I don't have a purse, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. I got jeans, though. You I got, got pockets, too. Yeah. You got pockets on your jeans? Yes. All right, how many pockets? Uh, two. Do we have anybody else with pockets? Well, you, you've got a hoodie on, right? Yes. Uh, so that has pockets. Okay. Yeah. Can, I, I, can I ask you to come up, please? Sure. Um, okay. My clothes are going to stay on, right? Yes, your clothes are going to stay on. All right. All right. All right. Okay, so you know what? Let's uh, let's uh, move it over, move it over. Okay. Uh, you, uh, well, you don't mind if you stand? Okay, good. Do you want me to Yeah, bring over, over, over there. there. Right? Let's, let's bring it over there. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay, so we've got some uh, some limited space here. So you know what? Yeah. Let, me, let me John's bring... still here, too? Yeah, John is stays there. Yes, 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 right. yes, yes. Wow. Okay, so I'm just gonna move the chair over. Can, maybe, maybe if necessary, move the camera over a little bit so that we can accommodate all three people on the same screen. Okay. okay. We're good. All right, we're good. We're good. All right. Now, gentlemen, I don't want to expect any of you gentlemen to employ any particularly advanced, uh, you know, all, all all this nonsense. Okay. I mean, right. I mean, I, I don't I don't expect any of you gentlemen to employ any anything like that because well, because you gentlemen have lives <laughs> okay <laughs> all right no i have a life it's just not a social one <laughs> <laughs> all right i don't expect any of you to do that sure. so having said that i am going to ask for you to employ the simplest possible action it's sure. called a straight cut sure. all right um go ahead go for it chris straight cut all right brilliant Okay, John, do the same thing. Straight cut. Look at that. And complete it, please. Complete that cut. Hey, oh, yeah. oh, oh, oh. Yep, it has to be a straight cut. Like that. Very good, very good. You see you see how a straight cut works? Oh, yeah. And also, you, you notice that yours wasn't exactly even. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You see how that works? That's, that. You see, there's an element of randomness and an element of chance because of that. You don't have to have, like, a, a completely even. You don't even have to have, like, you know... Uh, you can even actually bring either minority or majority of the deck over, you know. Yeah, right. So having said that, I am going to turn my back to you, gentlemen. All right. This time I'm going to be completely in the dark. All right, uh, Erica, Mike, you make sure that uh, I don't no, look. I don't look at what's going on on the table. All right. And also, you'll notice that I'll be talking in such a way that I don't shut up, because uh. I am going to ask you, uh, one of you, to perform another straight cut. All right. Okay. One of you perform another straight okay. cut. All right, I, 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 because having seen both of you perform a straight cut before, I have a, a sense of uh, how you guys straight cut. I have a sense of your, your technique. But because my back has turned to you, I don't know which of you actually did the straight cut. Does that make sense? Well, yes. Yeah. And you also notice that, again, I'm just looking at the wall here. There's no reflective surfaces. I, and I'm, I'm talking such that I don't shut up. I don't even hear what's going on. My own voice is providing a muffle. Mm -hmm. So having said that, gentlemen, I'm going to ask one of you it could be the same person, it could be a different person, to make a choice. And that choice would be to perf perform a straight cut or not perform a straight cut. You see how that works? Because if you don't perform a straight cut, I, or if you do, I don't know if the cards have been cut or not at this juncture. Does that make sense? So at this point, wh whichever one of you, uh, wh whoever decides to be, either you, you do give the duck cut a straight cut one more time or not cut the cards one more time. It's up to you. you just, just let me know when you've made your decision. Don't tell me if you've cut the cards or not, obviously, because you don't want to clue me in. That's the whole point. I have to be in the dark about this. Just simply let me know if a decision has been made. Okay. You've made a decision. You've made a decision. Very good. Okay. So let's see. Um, uh, let's see. Chris, you're the one with the hoodie, yes? Yes. All right. And John, you've got pants pockets, yes? Yes. Okay. So John, take what is currently the top card. Do not look at it and place it in your right pants pocket if you don't mind. All right, and you know what? Just for fun, um, Chris, yeah. 
Take what is currently the top card of the deck. Again, do not look at it. Okay. Put it in one of your hoodie pockets. Sure. You know, you know, on, on your on the front of your body. Okay. And does does anyone here have a, a uh, pocket like on the uh, back pocket on their pants? Does anyone have it? Uh, I do. I do. Yeah. We both do. Okay. All right. So one of you gentlemen. Choose which backside. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Choose which backside and take what is currently the top card. Do not look at it. You see how the theme works. Nobody looks at the cards. Uh, and and put it. Take it to where it's currently the top card. Do not look at it and put it in one of you gentlemen. Put it in your back pocket. Okay, one of you. All right. Okay. Mm-hmm. And have all the decisions been made? Have all has, has everything done? Yes. Yes. Okay, good. Put the rest of the deck face down inside the card box. Okay. Okay. All right. You see how I'm emphasizing this this series of conditions where I don't see anything. What's going on? You see how that works? Mm-hmm. And you also know that obviously I'm a sleight of hand specialist. So you know you've seen me work. And and the box has been closed. Yes. Okay, good. So you see how this works. I am completely in the dark with everything that's been going on. Everything, all right? So, um, okay, so let's see. Uh, who should I start with? Uh, I'm, you know, I'll start with you. Okay, John. Mm-hmm. All right. You have a card in your front pocket. Is mm-hmm. that right? Yes. For the first time, bring just enough of it out to where you can peek at the index. Okay. All right? Okay. See? Only you know what this is. Yes. And this is your first time knowing what it is. Yes. Okay, very good. Look at me, look at me, look at me. All right. Now, I, it's very convenient that your Misfits t-shirt oh, yeah. has black and red in the color scheme. Yes. Because the suit can the suit of the card could be either black or red. Mm-hmm. We can agree on that? Okay. So, black, red, black, red, black, red, black, red, black, black. I'm getting more reaction out of a, of a black card. Whenever I say black, I get more subtle reaction out of you out of that. So, I'm getting the impression that your card's a black card. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, now your, your suit, the suit, because it's a black suit, we know it could be a club or spade. Agreed? Club, spade, club, spade, club, spade, club. I Very subtle twitch of your lip whenever I say club, kind of. It's a guilt reaction there. You see how that works? <laughs> okay, so now I know it's a club. That's oh, good. Oh, man. All right, John, are you familiar with court cards? Yes. Jacks, queens, and kings, right? Oh, yeah. I get no guilt reaction out of that because you see, if you're if you're hiding a secret and someone just blurts it out, the natural reaction is to flinch, right? <laughs> I got no such flinch out of you, so I know it's not a, 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 a court card. So yours is a number, all right? The number could be low or high, low or high, low or high. Your, your cheeks, kind of. Whenever I say high, I'm like, yeah, I'm getting a high value. That's good. That's good. Good. Now it's not a ten. I gave you an eyebrow being. Okay, there you else. go. There you go. Okay, no, not, not ten. Nine, eight, seven, six, seven, seven, eight, eight, seven, somewhere, nine, seven, eight of clubs. Wow. Look at that, look at that, look at that. Wow. Dude! Oh, awesome. oh my wow. gosh. It gets wow. worse. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, wow. all right, all right, okay. Uh, Chris, was it? Yes. Which one of your pockets has the uh, uh, the playing card? This one, I, I, I think, still. That one still? Yes. Okay. That that one still. All right, good. You know what? Um, we're gonna we're gonna try something. Oh, but before I do, I forgot. I have to uh, get get this wallet here out of the out of my case. Now you have the card. Could you actually could you switch places for yeah, a moment? Sure. Yeah, yeah. All right. Okay. Because John, what I'm gonna ask you to do would be considered by most social circles to be touchy feely. Uh oh. Not that. Touchy. <laughs> don't worry, you don't have to go into that particular territory. Don't okay. worry. We're all, we're all, we're all we're all guys, friends. you know, we're, we're, we're all friends, we're all, mm. you know, we, we, we swing a certain way, <laughs> right? <laughs> Gentlemen, okay, here we go. So, John, what I'm going to ask you to do is to go into Chris's pocket and feel up his card. Don't remove it, don't peek at it, just cop a feel of that card. Feel all the sides, I, I feel all the surface, the edges, the corners. I go ahead. Hole. I have a hole in my pocket. Okay, so go ahead, go ahead. Go in there, feel that thing up, all right? <laughs> feel it up, go ahead. You feel all the surface, oh, yeah. everything, okay? Yeah, definitely. So this corners, is a total, layer, yeah, right? okay, you're totally feeling this thing. Yes, oh, yeah. he is. All right, he's totally copping a feel of this one, all right? <laughs> okay, 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 let go, let go, all right? All right, so John, here we go, look at me. Okay, at this point, everything is about feelings, all right? Yes. So at this point, uh, you're going to be operating off your feelings entirely. Okay. And I'm going to ask you a series of questions, John. Sure. And what I'm going to do is, when I ask you those questions, I provide certain scenarios. Okay. Uh, you might receive a feeling, okay? Oh, okay. And when you receive that feeling, 
I want you to let that feeling guide your choices. Okay. For example, uh, there are possible 13 possible numbers exactly, that yeah. his car could pick. It could be ace, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, jack, queen, and king. Have your feelings kind of guided you to one of those numbers? Yes. Okay, very good. Now, there, there are four possible suits, okay? There is clubs, hearts, spades, and diamonds. Have your feelings guided you to one of the suits? Yes. Okay, so bear in mind, you've only felt the card, your feelings have guided you all the way up until this point, uh, and your feelings have kind of given you all kinds of information. And can you call, bring that information together into a, a single playing card? Yes. For the first time, name that playing card? Ten of spades. Ten of spades. Now bear in mind, he didn't even see the card. Nobody did. Could you take that card out of your pocket and if it is in the... Oh, sorry. Oh, oh, give me a break. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, wow. oh my goodness. That was a silence. How? That's sick. I know. That was sick. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You are very good, John. Thank you so much. But you know, it gets worse. <laughs> because in this wallet here, I've had this one card. Oh. Right? Now, remember one of you has a card in the back pocket? Mm -hmm. If it matches this... Go nuts. Go ballistic. Come on. Bring it up. Who's got it? Oh! 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 Look at that! Oh! 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 Son of a bitch! Oh, that's crazy, God. man. God! Gentlemen! Damn. Gentlemen! Damn. Woo! 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 All right. You know what? We got wow. five minutes. Is that right? Yes, sir. All right. How am I going to end this one? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Teleport me to Florida. Okay. You know what? Here, here, here. I brought this book out. Let's... You know what? Why, why bring this up if I'm not going to use it? All right. Yeah, there you go. Okay, we got two people here, yep. and I got an iPhone. Mine. All right. So here's here's what I'm going to do. Uh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Uh, uh, no, no. There's one app that I'm going to use. It's it's very simple. It is yeah. This one. Hold on a minute. I, let me just erase it. No, not erase. Let me just clear everything. Clear. Okay. Done. Okay. Can we agree on this? This is called a. Oh, oh, dude. All right. Okay, fine. A sketchpad app. Can we agree yes. on this? Uh, yes. Yep. Yeah. All right. Okay. okay. So, undo that. All right. So, here, here we go. All right. We're plugging this book. <laughs> Thank All you. right. We're dropping this thing. All right. So, Chris. Yes. I'm going to go like this. Just say stop anytime you sure. want. Just say stop. stop. Here. Whatever the top word is, yeah. look at that top word. Yes. All right. Okay. So, you have that? Yes. That is totally yours. Okay. Yes. Now, okay. Uh, your, your, um, your turn. Uh, all right, uh, John, say stop. Anytime you want. Stop. Here, okay. Or right, whatever that top word is, the top word up here, you know, the word that's closest to the top corner, mm -hmm. just just get that, okay? Okay. All right, so now, to two two words, all right? Mm -hmm. So, let's see. Uh, just think of him, think of him, think of him. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. This is a totally mental thing here, all right? And... Okay, you, you, you guys could have stopped anywhere you wanted, all right? Okay, so only the home audience at this point knows what's going on. Uh, Chris, what was the word that you were thinking of? Uh, when. <laughs> oh my god. And John, That's what was the word? Crazy. I mean, John, what's the word you were thinking of? Just. Oh no. my god. Get out of here. Oh, man. get out of here. Oh, oh hell no. Man. You're a book, dude. You're oh a book. Oh my god. That's it's crazy. not like I gimmicked this thing or anything like that. That's crazy. You're going to make me whistle to death. Okay. Oh, wow. dude. Dude. Wow. Oh. That is sick. All right. kind of quick so you know what let me try something well you know we had erica here let yeah. me just bring her sure. over. just for one random thing here okay so cool. let's see all switch right, it up. okay so switch it up switch it up i'm gonna need the space here so all right so you know what having said that we're gonna need the space oh, good, dude, dude. okay here we go here we go, here we go. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's pretty so you, you think you can make a pizza uh, man so disappear okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right okay erica Try using that mic. Okay, okay, good, good, good. Try, try using that mic. All right, so we're trying using the mic. This is gonna be a kinetic experiment. Uh, Unger the radar is next. We'll be all the movies will be reviewed. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm plugging a, a Randy show now. Well, we'll both be there, so yeah, yeah right. We'll both be there anyway. We'll be reviewing Solo, the latest Star Wars movie. It's one of the anthology movies. All right. So the force is with us. <laughs> All right? I am one with the force and the force is with me. I am one with the force and the force is with me. Yes, I like World One. Thank you very much. All right. So so right now the force is with us. Okay. Right? Uh, and at this point... 
making headlines. At this point, Naruto is with us. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Tiger. Uh, right. Okay. Yes. You know. Also, so you know, ninjutsu hand skills. Okay. So, Erica, here's one. Who are you summoning? I'm like, do I really have to answer that question? I mean, come on. Do I want to spoil the surprise here? No. Okay. All right. So, here, here we go. Okay. In a moment, I'm gonna snap my fingers. You're gonna close your eyes. You're gonna keep them shut. You'll be in a state of relaxation. You won't open your eyes again until I snap my fingers again. Read. Okay. Okay. Now, bear in mind, we're on the air. We're in a public setting. I say all that because everything that's going to happen at this point will be within the realm of common decency. I say that because I'm going to touch you in various persons, places on your person. Hmm. Yeah. Don't worry, it's, it's all yeah. good. Okay, mm -hmm. so uh, stand here, like, okay, 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 right here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna move around a lot, okay. all right? So here's the deal. Any place I touch you on your right side, you raise your right arm. Any place I touch you on your left side, any place at all, you raise your left arm. Okay. Make sense? Okay, here we go, here we go. You have been in, you it's your turn to have been in the dark and all this, but once you see the recording of this, you'll see okay. the, the exact nature of the freakiness that just took place. That was pretty crazy. Wow. Basically, you'll notice oh, that wow. I did touch you in the beginning, but at certain points, I didn't because the force was with us. That is yeah. amazing. Yes! So, thank you, Evan Ginsberg, for once again allowing me to grace you. Yes! 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 All right. Thank you, thank you, thank you. The uh, mutant powers of Robin Chan. Yeah, all right. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. So, we're good? It's amazing. Good. All right. All right. And that should pretty much do it. The Evan Ginsberg Show, VillageConnectionRadio.com. Don't forget, Saturday, June 9, we have Dr. D. David Schultz in studio, Village Connection Radio, 11 Lake Place, Huntington. And on the uh, 3rd of June, we have... Sh Shane Douglas, uh, uh, Mar Marty Janetti, uh, Sir Christopher Michaels, and Butcher Blackwell in studio. There you go. I was oh close. Oh my gosh, the franchise and, and one of the records. Oh, dude. And uh, we want to thank everybody um, in studio, and we want to thank uh, Jim Savalli for this forum. And don't forget, 350 days in theaters, July 12th, nationwide. Check it out. 350 days, the movie.com, fathom events.com. Thank you once again, Robin Channing, the amazing Robin yeah. Channing. Yeah. And that'll about do it, folks. Signing off. <coughs> 350 days a year as a wrestler on the road. Maybe it's a sickness. 350 days a year. A lot of physical pain. A lot of loneliness. You have no home life whatsoever. Piper and me riding down the road doing eight balls of cocaine. And I'm sure it broke up marriages. How many guys uh, in the wrestling business have a family left when they're done? Most of them lose it. I couldn't have children. I couldn't put them on a turnbuckle while mommy worked. I look forward to it, bro. You know why? Because I love it so much. It's in my heart. When you're famous, you don't have to go look for trouble. Trouble comes knocking on your door. I hit the bars. And that was my character. Sitting in a room with a bunch of wrestlers doing cocaine, we really got to know each other. I would take a lot of downers, and uh, I, I did have problems with the, with the downers. I'm embarrassed to admit it, but I was not a faithful husband from the first day, for the whole time, on the road. 
I lived a double life. I needed it. It was like, I'm not getting the love I needed home. Would I do, oh, would I do, oh my God, I'm afraid to say I would do it again. I wouldn't change a thing. No regrets. I loved everything I did. I actually wish I could do it all over again. What I want to tell you, you know, to make some big money in wrestling, you had to wrestle every night of the week, $30 every day. So you had to wrestle six and seven times every week just to earn your money. 350 days on the road with wrestlers, a living hell.